Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK back at you with another video here. It's right on the five game NBA main state on Thursday. A couple things before I get in the video. If you're new to the channel, my name's DK. I make daily videos talking about NBA DFS as well as NFL DFS. I'm also running a weekly $20 PayPal giveaway on my channel. How it works, all you have to do is leave a like and a comment in the video. That's one entry in the giveaway. Max one comment though per video. So it starts with my Monday NBA, NBA video at the beginning of the week. We'll go throughout the week. We'll end of my Monday uh, NBA video at the end of the week. So um, however many videos I've uploaded for the week, you can enter the giveaway that many times. So I have 10 videos uploaded for the week, you can enter the giveaway 10 times. And again, the winner receives $20 PayPal for myself. But with that out of the way, let's jump into the video. So first look at my, back at my lineup here from Wednesday night. So if you guys watched my live stream, you knew I was going a bit more contrarian, um, only playing GPPs tonight. But I gave you guys my core for cash games. So my core for cash games, um, again, if you watch the live streams, I was su I was really high in the Philly guys. You guys knew that from my video as well. As well as the Boston guys once Jason Tatum got rolled out, as well as Malcolm Brogdon. So my core that I gave you guys in the live stream was Ben Simmons, Al Horford, Gordon Hayward, and Monte Morris on the fact that Jamal Murray is out. Jamal Murray ended up playing, but he just got injured like at halftime. It looks like it was pretty bad too. Um, so... Uh, that's we got a bit lucky there, but uh, I just stuck with Monte Morris. Um, so yeah, it was again. If you played a couple of Philadelphia guys, like I said, if you played a couple of those Boston guys, um, you probably had a really good night. Kemba was slightly disappointing, but Brown and Hayward were really, really good. And again, the three Philly guys, Simmons, Horford, Tobias, were, were great. So hope you guys had a good night. Also, Brogdon was a guy I was pretty high on as well. Um, so Kyrie Irving, the reason I played him was I knew he was going to be low owned. Um, and he got 32 minutes the night before. So it looked like he was off his minutes limit. He ended up getting 37 minutes, which is if I knew Kyrie was going to play 37 minutes going to the night, I would have locked him in everywhere, including cash games. He just, we got a bit unlucky. He had a really bad shooting night, uh, six of 21, I believe. And just watching the game, Philadelphia kept double teaming him. It was, it was a little bit frustrating to watch. Uh, Dinwiddie had a really good game, but, um, yeah, like I said, if I could do it all over for GPPs, I would have played Kyrie again. Um, and again, he got 37 minutes. So, um, I'm not really, um, you know, again, again I'm not really, um, let down by that, I guess. Like, uh, he got 37 minutes, just had a had bad shooting night. Um, and then other plays up, um, in my lineup here, De'Aaron Fox was one of my favorite plays. He's off to a great start here. 11 fancy points in the first five minutes. Uh, Cody Zeller is one of those value guys I liked. Um, you know, I was a little bit hesitant because they said news was coming out that they're going to use all three centers, but I just stuck with Zeller. There wasn't a whole lot of great value plays. I stuck with Monte Morris and then JaVel McGee. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, it's going to be tough for me to cash in this tournament just as Kyrie kind of had an off night, but if Deer and Fox can keep up this pace, you never know. So we'll see how it goes. Hopefully you guys had a good night. Again, the Philly guys, the Boston guys, I was pretty high on. Um, all of them had a really solid game, except for Kemba, who was just a little bit of a letdown, but everyone else was really good. So um, yeah, that basically wraps it up here for uh, Wednesday. So let's talk about Thursday slate. I checked Bovada. There's no uh, overrunners and spreads out yet. So we'll just get right into it. Um, and we'll talk about this five game slate. All right. So there is a good amount of injuries on the slate. Uh, but we will, let's just start with center as always. So, at the top here is Nikola Jokic, 9.6K. We just had Jamal Murray. I believe he got carried off. I am almost positive he's going to be out for this one. So, with Jamal Murray out, with Gary Harris possibly out, and with Paul Millsap possibly out, Denver could be pretty thin. If all those guys are out, yeah, Jokic does stand out as a good play here going up against Golden State. Um, I don't really think Amari Spellman or Willie Colley Steins going to be able to stay with him. So, right now... I think Jokic does stand out as a really solid spot up there at that price. Also, don't mind Gobert. Um, I think I would give the edge to Jokic compared to Gobert. I just like his upside a little bit higher. But, you know, Gobert has been getting you there. Last four games, 47, 48, 47, 56 fancy points. Really good matchup against the Pelicans. So, I'm fine with Gobert as well. Um, Vucevic at 8.5K. Orlando also pretty thin. Uh, we got uh, Evan Fournier ruled out for this game tonight. We'll see what his availability is for tomorrow. If he's out once again... That's more usage in this offense. So Vucevic, uh, going to have to do a lot too. I, I like him as a spend-up center. I also really like Julius Randle at 8K. The Knicks have been pretty thin. Uh, even in that game against Milwaukee, it blew out. In 27 minutes, he had 50 fancy points. So he's playing a great basketball right now. I know the price is creeping up there, but uh, this match against Phoenix is a pretty solid one. Phoenix has been playing a lot faster pace this, um, recently. So I do like Julius Randle 
um, too, as well, at 8K. There's a lot of good uh, spend-up centers here. DeAndre Ayton, um, I think I would like him more if he starts. Now, he did come on the bench and play 33 minutes. Played pretty well there against Atlanta, too. So this is something to keep an eye on. They've been kind of switching off, you know, him starting, him coming off the bench. If he ends up starting, I would like him a lot more. I think those minutes would probably be into the higher 30s. So that's something to keep an eye on for sure. We also have no Kelly Oubre, so that's more usage to go around. So that is a little bit of a boost there, DeAndre Ayton. Zion is not going to play tonight or or Thursday, I guess I should say, but he is going to be back, I believe, the 22nd, or, or he's coming He's coming back soon. I believe like less than a week, Zion is. Uh, Montrose Harrell at 6.6K is uh, seems like a decent price here. Now, Orlando, not the best matchup just because they played at a slower pace, but uh, yeah, I'm okay with Montrez at that price. Uh, we got to keep an eye. I believe, did Paul George actually, hold on, let me confirm something. I believe Paul George, yeah, he already did get rolled out. So with him out, again, it's, you know, Montrez, Kawhi, Lou Williams, all uh, all viable for sure. Uh, but back to center here. So Favors at 5.9K, looks like he's going to be good to go. This is a revenge spot. We'll see. If he's not going to be on a minutes limit, I would like him. But I don't know. Again, that's somebody to keep an eye on. So hopefully we get news of that uh, for tomorrow. And it's Cantor at a 5.7. More of just a GPP play, right? With Tice back, he's just not going to play as many minutes. Okafor can't do that with Favors back. Uh, Zubak had a really good game at last game against Cleveland. Uh, the game blew out, so we got a little extra run. 4.8 just seems too much to pay for him. Brooke Lopez at 4.8. Probably not for me. Again, I just like a lot of those spent up centers. Spellman at 4.8. I don't really know how he's going to handle Jokic uh, if they're going to try to play him on Jokic, so don't think I can go there. Jeremy Grant at 4.8. Again, just seems priced about right. I liked it when he was you know below 4K. We have Mitchell Robinson, probable. But again, he's just not seeing a whole lot of minutes. He's always in foul trouble, literally always in foul trouble. So that's the risk with Mitchell Robinson. Paul Millsap, he, he's out tonight. We'll see if he's available to go tomorrow. So that's obviously something to keep an eye on. Bobby Portis at 4.5. Got extended a bit because of the blowout. Um, I'm okay with it, but I think in a close game, he probably only gets like 15 to 20 minutes. Hayes can't do that with Favors coming back. Melly, again, can't do that with Favors coming back. We also have Ingram coming back. Uh, Baines' minutes have been down. I don't think I can go there, right? Only 15 that last game. Let's see. Tice at 4K is actually not bad. He did get a good amount of run. I got 28 minutes at 30 fancy points. So I'm okay with him as a value play. Taj Gibson at 3.9. Um, only got a, I mean, he took like 26 and 31 minutes, but only 11 at last game. So probably not for me. Willie Cauley Stein. I mean, I think he probably matched up better against Jokic than Spellman does, but we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm fine with him as a, a cheaper dart throw play. And that is really it. So, yeah, all in all, guys, center, there is a lot to like, especially at the top range here, or the top end. Uh, we got Jokic, Gobert, Vucevic, Randall. I like all those guys. I would like Aiton a lot more if he starts. Uh, don't mind Montrez in the mid-range. So there's a lot to like there for center, especially at the top. But let's move on to power forward. Giannis at 11-7. This is, um, you know, a, a tougher spot against Boston, but we have... Uh, the availability of Tatum and Jalen Brown up in the air. Tatum missed the game tonight, and we have Jalen Brown. I just saw Fantasy Labs tweet. He's uh, his status is up in the air for this game uh, tomorrow or you know Thursday. So uh, there's a lot of you know question marks there for Boston. Giannis at 11-7. Just thought of Brittany. Look what he did against New York in 21 minutes. Had 57 fancy points in 21 minutes. Almost three fancy points a minute. Just insane. Um, yeah, I I'm fine with him as a spin up right. Uh, but it's just, you know, whether or not do you feel comfortable with the value guys to get him in there. So if you feel if you feel comfortable with value guys to get Giannis in, I'm okay with him as a spend up. I also kind of like Ingram here at 8.4. I know it's a tougher spot here against Utah, but we have Drew Holiday, I believe, already ruled out. The Pelicans are just very, very thin right now. Um, Drew is, yep, already ruled out against the Jazz. So Ingram's going to have to do a lot offensively. Wouldn't be too worried about only the 31 minutes against Boston. That game was a blowout. Before that... 39, 38, 39 minutes in that game against Utah um, about a week ago. He had 56 fancy points. So I still like Ingram at this price. Again, he's going to have to do a lot offensively. So he does stand out even in a tough spot there. So we have Tatum was out tonight. We have the availability of Jalen Brown up in the air. If both those guys are out, then uh, Gordon Hayward, Marcus Smart, and Kemba Walker really stand out as good plays. Even in this tough match against Milwaukee, 
I would really like all three of those guys. So that's something to keep an eye on. Um, you know, if Tatum is available and Brown can't go, then obviously Tatum stands as a decent play. If Tatum can't go and Brown is available, obviously you can look to Brown as well. So again, something to keep an eye on there for Boston. They could be pretty thin. Again, Ubre already brought that up. He's not going to be available. So those, uh, that's a boost to those other starters for Phoenix. Gordon Hayward. So I would really like him um, if he if both Tatum and uh, Brown are out. He played 32 minutes the last game against Detroit. Had 38 fancy points. Again, he was in my core there for cash games. So yeah, I would really like Gordon Hayward if both those guys are out. Marcus Morris at 6.3 is questionable. This is something to keep an eye on. Uh, if he can't go, it's obviously more usage to Randall. If he if he's available to play, I don't hate him at this price. I think he's more of just a GPP play though. Uh, Aaron Gordon. It's a tougher spot here against the Clippers, but. If Fournier is out once again, if DJ Augustine is out, then you know Orlando will be pretty thin. So wouldn't mind going to Aaron Gordon. I want to see how many minutes he plays tonight against the Lakers. It is a back-to-back, -back, but uh, 6K is, is a pretty fair price. Bojan Bogdanovic, really, really good matchup here. Uh, my issue with him is he is so scoring dependent. He has to nail shots to get you there. So that is always you know the downside with him. Other options, let's see. Again, like those, uh, those Pelicans bigs with favors coming back. I don't want to go there. Also, Ingram back too, right? Eric Pascal, 4.1. How many minutes did he go at? He did get 25 minutes that last game. Now, the game did blow out, though, but hmm. he's, a, he's a riskier target just because the Mets are kind of up and down. Marquise Chris, is he going to be available? Is expected to suit up. Okay, so this is actually pretty significant because he's expected to suit up. We'll see. He could be, you know, he's probably the best matchup against Jokic, the, the, you know, their best option for defense. So if Marquise Chris picks up a start here, I would like him a good amount. Now, there's definitely foul trouble issues, right? There's, you know, they have a lot of guys healthy now, Spellman, Willie Cauley-Stein. So we'll see. If Marquise Chris picks up a start, I would like him as a value play. If he comes out the bench, that's more of just a dart throw, right, just because the minutes would probably be, um, you know, not as secure there. Let's see. Other options. Um, Dario Sarch at 3.8K has been starting. He's not been playing big minutes. But with Kelly Uber out, he could get a little extra run. Now, I still wouldn't feel great about this. But, um, you know, he probably gets maybe a couple more minutes. Michael Porter Jr. So, I made, I made a tweet. I was like, man, of course Michael Porter Jr. is getting the minutes when no one plays him tonight. Because he had like 13 or 14 first half minutes already. Uh, whenever he was chalked a uh, couple weeks ago, he just got like no minutes. So, uh, you know, I expect Jamal Murray to be out. If uh, Gary Harris is out as well, as well as Paul Millsap, then Denver is pretty thin. And I would consider Michael Porter Jr. if all three of those guys are out for sure. But that that's basically it for power forward. So let's run a small forward. A Kawhi at the top at 10.1. Again, not really the best matchup uh, because Orlando plays at a slow pace. But, um, you know, he's been playing the big Mets in a close game. If Orlando can keep this close, he probably gets, you know, 37, 38 minutes. And without Paul George, his upside is pretty high. So, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with Kawhi. It's just, you know, whether or not you think Orlando keeps that game close. Let's see. Other options. Uh, Barton will get a boost, with obviously with no Jamal Murray. So I think he stands as a pretty good option uh, in a good matchup here against Golden State. Again, the availability of those Boston guys are key. If Brown and Tatum are out, then, you know, again, it's Hayward, it's Marcus Smart, it's Kemba Walker. Yeah, so Fournier is ruled out for this game tonight. Again, if he's out once again, you know, Fultz, Gordon, Ross, Vucevic, those guys all get a usage boost. Uh, Joe Ingles is 6.1K, really good matchup. Um, did Has played 33 and 30 minutes, which is good to see. His minutes were trending down, um, but these last couple games, 33 and 30. The thing I like about playing Joe Ingles, and I prefer him to, to Bojan always, it's just because he gets those peripheral stats, right? He gets assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. So I prefer Joe Ingles to, to Bojan because of that reason, because he gets those peripheral stats. Let's see, Draymond Green at 5.8. It's just, he's not seeing enough minutes right now. 5.8 is just, eh, probably not for me. J.J. Redick is questionable. This is uh, pretty significant if he can't go. Then, you know, each one more, Josh Hart, those guys become viable, cheaper options. Terrence Ross, DraftKings did a good job raising his price to 5.3, where even as, if Fournier is out, probably wouldn't go there. We also have Damian Lee back. So Golden State is going to be pretty healthy. I uh, said he's going to start as well. So that's why I'm just not super high on a lot of those secondary Golden State pieces, just because they have a lot of bodies. Um, again, if Marquise Chris starts, I would have some interest there, but not a whole lot stands out there for Golden State. 
Mikel Bridges is a 4.5, so he played 33 minutes, had a really good shooting night, had four steals and one block. Don't think we can expect that again. A bit of an outlier. But with Kelly Oubre out, he's going to have to play a lot more minutes. So I think he does stand out as a pretty solid value play. I wouldn't expect, again, all those peripheral stats, but I think he does stand out as a pretty uh, solid cheap option. Uh, Glenn Robinson at 4.5. Um, I liked him in that game against Dallas. He played 32 minutes, 26 fancy points. I still think he probably gets around 30 minutes, so he's an okay value play. Uh, even with Damian Lee back, I don't really think his minutes are affected too much. Other options, let's see. Again, Michael Porter Jr., if all those guys are out for Denver, once again, you could for sure look to him. But that's basically it. So let's move on to shooting guard. Uh, Booker at the top at 9K, I like a good amount. We have no Kelly Oubre, so that's a lot of usage to go around. Uh, Ricky Rubio is back, but still, you know, Booker has had upside games with Ricky, with Ricky Rubio playing. Obviously, the matchup against the Knicks, Knicks not very good defensively. So I do like Booker a good amount as a spend up there. Um, DeAndre Russell, I think, is more of a contrarian play. Now, this is not really the best spot here against Denver, but Denver could be pretty shorthanded. And if all those guys are out, I think Golden State has a better chance of keeping it close. And if they are going to keep it close, it's most likely because of uh, DeAndre Russell. He's played 35 and 34 matches, which is really good to see. I think he is a pretty good GPP play. Um, you know, the reason I think he's more of a GPP play is just because of the tougher match against Denver. But... Uh, it's really good to see him getting those minutes. And again, 7.5K is very fair. So I do like D'Angelo Russell, a good amount for GPPs. Also don't mind a Donovan Mitchell at 7.4. A good match here at the Pelicans. His price has come down after some bad performances. But uh, 7.4 is a pretty fair price for him. Don't mind Lou either. Again, Lou, Montrez, uh, Kawhi Leonard, all stand out as pretty decent options. It's just whether or not you think Orlando can keep it close, right? The Clippers are, are one of the better teams in the NBA. They blow out a lot of teams. So there's definitely a chance this game could blow out. If you think Orlando keeps it close, you're probably going to want to target one of those uh, big three guys for the Clippers. Other options, let's see. R.J. Barrett at 5.9. Did have a pretty decent game. Now he's gotten 40 and 32 minutes in back-to-back -back games. Um, if Marcus Morris is out, I think you can consider R.J. Barrett. Um, let's see. Other options, yeah, Marcus Smart. If both those guys are out for Boston, if both Brown and Tatum are out, I think Marcus Smart's hands out is a really good play at this price. Not really concerned they had an off-shooting night there. Um, he would just have to do a lot more offensively there for Boston. Other options, Burks with all those guys coming back for Golden State, probably can't can't do it. Josh Hart at 4.8, kind of had an off game there against Detroit, but I think if J.J. Reddick's out, he probably gets like mid-30s minutes again, so he's a fine value play. I already talked about Bridges right with no Kelly Uber. I think he stands as a pretty decent option. Other options, NAW is just... Uh, Whenever he is chalk, it's always Frank Jackson season. And that happened once again. It happened here against Boston. It happens here against Detroit. He was pretty popular in both those games. And Frank Jackson uh, just had, you know, the good night. Um, you know, if J.J. Redick is out, you could look to uh, Frank Jackson. NAW is just, I don't know. I don't think I can do it. So Malik Beasley at 3.1. He, um, if, so if Gary Harris and Jamal Murray are out once again, um, well, again, I assume Jamal Murray's going to be out because he had a pretty nasty injury. Uh, if Gary Harris is out too, then I think Malik Beasley stands out as a really good value play. Uh, we did see Torrey Craig pick up a start, but I think Malik Beasley would have to play a lot more minutes. So he would stand out as a really, really solid uh, um, cheap play there if Gary Harris can't go. And that basically is it for shooting guard. So let's move on to point guard. Lonzo, even in a tough spot and even at elevated price point, I still think is in play. Now, I think he, he makes for more of a contrarian option at this price, but I still think he is viable. Um, he's been playing big minutes. He's been having, you know, filling up the stat sheet with no Drew Holiday. His upside has been pretty high. Let's see, Kemba, I know he kind of had an off night here, 33 minutes, 28 fancy points. But if both Brown and, Hay and, both Brown and Tatum are out, you've got to like Kemba, even in a tough spot. Him, Smart, Hayward, and have to do a lot offensively. Don't mind Rubio either at 7.2K with no Kelly Oubre. That's a lot of usage to go around. Jamal Murray, again, they don't have him listed out yet, but I really think he's going to be um, he's gonna be ruled out for this one. I believe. Let me just confirm this in Fantasy Labs, but I believe he was carried to the locker room. Um, yeah, Jamal Murray carried to the locker room. So I don't expect him to go. Uh, Bledsoe at 6.3 is, is a perfectly fair price for him. 
That game against New York only played 21 minutes because of the blowout. In closer games, though, he has been getting uh, closer to 30, which is good to see. So I think Bledsoe does stand as a pretty decent uh, mid-tier play there. Let's see, Alfred Payton at uh, 5.5. Again, I wouldn't be super concerned about the game against Milwaukee. I did blow out. I think he's an okay option. If you're going more for a game stack, I'm fine with him. Let's see. Monte Morris at 4.4K. So I really do assume Jamal Murray is going to be out. If that's the case, Monte Morris stands out as probably the best cheap option here at 4.4. I think he starts, probably plays, you know, around 30 minutes or so. So he stands out as probably one of the best um, value plays of the day. Yeah, so Frank Jackson, right, he's been having, he's had two really solid games, 33 and 32 minutes, 20, 26 fancy points. If J.J. Redick is out once again, I think you can look to Frank Jackson as a value play. But, you know, what, what will probably happen is a lot of people will finally play Frank Jackson, and then it'll be the NAW night. That's just how it goes for DF, DFS sometimes. Super, super tilting game. Um, again, Malik Beasley, if both Murray and Harris are out, I think he also stands out as a really solid value play. But, um, yeah, I think that is basically it, guys. So, again, brief overview of the slate, short five-game slate. But uh, Phoenix side, we have no Kelly Oubre. So, Booker, um, you know, Rubio, Aiton all get a usage boost. I think Mikel Bridges becomes a viable, cheap option. Also, I believe I didn't talk about – hold on. I didn't talk about Cameron Johnson, did I? He's at 3.1. He got 25 minutes. So, he would also be another value play very, very much in play. So, yeah, on the Phoenix side, again, it's Rubio. Um, Booker, Aiton, and then the, the cheap guys with uh, Cameron Johnson and uh, Mikel Bridges. On the New York side, we have some injuries up in there, or the status of Marcus Morris up in there. If he misses, obviously usage boost to Randall, who I do like a good amount. And then you can consider guys like RJ Bear and Alfred Payton. On the Boston side, we have um, you know a couple question marks uh, with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. If they both can't go, then Kemba, Smart, and... Um, and Gordon Hayward really stand out as good plays. On the Milwaukee side, I like Giannis, uh, and I like Bledsoe there in the mid-range. Utah, it's a really good spot here. I think my favorite play probably being Joe Ingles, but you, you know you could look to really any of those starters. Uh, on the Pelican side, they're going to be pretty short-handed once again. Uh, I think Ingram probably my favorite play, but there are other options, like Lonzo is a contrarian option. You could look to Hart as a value play. You could look to Frank Jackson as a value play. Uh, Favors, if he's not going to be limited, I would have some interest there. On the Orlando side, also, um, some question marks, right? The status of Fournier is up in the air. If he can't go, Vucevic gets a usage boost. Aaron Gordon gets a usage boost. You can look to Ross and Fultz as well. On the Clippers side, we still have no Paul George. So Kwai, Lou Williams, Montrez all stand out as good options. It's just, you know, do you think Orlando keeps it close? If the answer is yes, then you probably want to play one of those Clippers guys. And then finally, Denver, Golden State, Denver. I think this is where you're going to get a lot of your value. Um, if Jamal Murray and... Um, um, Gary Harris are out, and if Paul Millsap is out, they're just super, super thin. So Jokic is a spend up, really stands out. Barton's gonna have to do a lot more offensively, and then the value guys, right? Monte Morris, Malik Beasley, possibly Michael Porter Jr. So um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of you know um, injuries to keep an eye on. And then Golden State, not a whole lot that stands out. I mean, I wouldn't mind Marquise Chris if he starts as a value play. I think my favorite play though would be DeAndre Russell, more of a contrarian option though because of the tougher spot. But I do like that he's been getting the minutes. So uh, I think that's going to do it for today's video, guys. If you have been enjoying the content, would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe. Again, if you want to get into the giveaway, all you need to do is a like and a comment in the video. That's one inch in the giveaway. I will be live streaming for this short five-game slate uh, 30 minutes before lock on my YouTube channel, so be sure to check out the live stream as well as follow me on Twitter. That will be in the description below. Um, but yeah, thanks again for everyone coming, check, coming to check out the video. Um, I will see you guys all tomorrow in the live stream.